Many thanks for joining us again on the newsroom. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is currently presiding over a meeting of the National Economic Council NEC. The council chaired by the vice president has all state governors and relevant ministers as members. Oshibajo is presiding from the presidential villa in Abuja, while other members are participating virtually. Issues bordering on economy and security, amongst others, are expected to be discussed at the meeting. The federal government has concluded plans to embark on a program to electrify 200 primary health care centers and all the 104 unity schools across the country. Minister of Fa Salim Ahmad disclosed this in a series of tweets on Wednesday. He explains that the mini grid was also designed to provide solar powered street lights to the host communities of the health care centers and within the environment of the schools. The minister further explains that the decision was taken to revamp and ease the learning process in the Unity schools and to facilitate uninterrupted health care services to rural communities. No fewer than 30 people were killed on Tuesday night in renewed bandit attacks on four villages in Bakura and Maradun local government areas of Zamfara State. The attacks were said to have been carried out simultaneously in the two local government areas. Leading a delegation of the state government to the affected villages, the Speaker of the Zamfara State House of Assembly, Nasir Magaya, assured the victims that the state government would provide succor to them and ensure the deployment of more security personnel in the area. The U.S. Drug, mega, drug maker Pfizer has confirmed that suspect doses of its coronavirus vaccine that were seized in Mexico and Poland were indeed fake. About 80 people were said to have received fake doses of the drug at a clinic in Mexico. Pfizer said the liquid in the confiscated vials in Poland was a cosmetic substance thought to be anti-wrinkle cream. The company said it tested the bogus vials and found they did not contain the two-shot vaccine it developed with BioNTech. And businesses in Nigeria lose about $29 billion annually as a result of the country's unreliable electricity, and this is according to the World Bank Group. The bank's position was contained in a power sector recovery program fact sheet, which was presented during the World Bank virtual dialogue with energy reporters on Wednesday. It also observes that Nigeria had the largest number of people without access to electricity in the world, as every one in 10 people without access to electricity now reside in Nigeria. Former South African President Jacob Zuma's lawyers have filed a notice of withdrawal from representing him without giving any reason. The notice filed on Wednesday followed last week's ruling in which the former president lost an appeal against the state's bid to recover money that it had spent on his legal fees. The development is also coming before the corruption trial due to begin on 17th of May. Zuma is currently facing 16 charges over a $2 billion state arms deal, including fraud, racketeering and money laundering all of which he has pleaded not guilty to. Manchester United supporters broke into the club's quarantine training base on Thursday morning to protest against the club owners. Around 20 fans made their way into the training ground before they were addressed by Red Devils boss Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, after which they were escorted off the premises. Manchester United fans have been annoyed with the ownership of the club since the Glazer family took over in 20, 2005. The basis of their anger is around the debt that was brought into the club and many fans believe the American owners do not have United's best interest at heart. For that latest update on the newsroom at this time, please join us on the next hour for more.